Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So it's been a while since I did any movie and TV fight reviews. Um, so here we are with Game of Thrones. Uh, and this is the Attack of the Sand Snakes. The Sand Snakes being Oberyn Martell's three daughters. And um, they're out for vengeance. Um, Jamie and Bronn are their intended victims in this case. And um, let's have a look at what they're, what they're going to do. I have to say my first impression of this fight was that it was rubbish. Um, uh, generally speaking, I don't think the fights in Game of Thrones are brilliantly done. Although I think there's a general tendency for the... Um, the sort of the cold environment fights are better choreographed in general or at least better put together than the fights in the southern locations. I don't know whether they have different fight directors for each or something like that or maybe different um, stunt doubles or whatever but generally speaking it seems to me that the fights in the colder areas are better than the fights in the hotter areas. Um, so yeah, so when I first saw this fight I thought it was rubbish um, but I have to say, on repeat viewings, it's not too bad. Um, it's quite entertaining. I think it suffers largely from not very clear editing. It's, it's difficult to tell what's going on at various points and who's fighting who. Um, but essentially you've got um, Jamie and Bronn both with swords uh, and the Sand Snakes are armed with, uh, one's armed with a spear, one's armed with a whip and a dagger, and the other is armed with a pair of daggers and we've got to assume that all of the Sand Snakes uh, weapons are poisoned in this case. So here we go, first up um, we see the whip come straight into action. Okay, Now the whip seems to be largely used to detain a person's um, body or um, weapon arm whilst another person attacks them. Um, now I have to say whips, bull whips like this are not a very effective weapon. Yes, it might hurt you if it hits you, but it's certainly not going to stop you. It's not going to stop a determined attacker. Um, and if someone attacks you with a whip, the best thing to do is just charge them down and take them down at close range. It's not going to do anything to stop you. It's not going to seriously wound you. The worst it might do is um, cut any exposed areas open, uh, possibly, but probably it just give you a nasty bruise um, and not a lot more than that. It's really the uh, daggers and the spears and the swords in this fight, the, the actual dangerous things, although they make a really big issue with the whip um, because I guess that's probably how they envisioned it looking as a, as a most exciting fight. So the whip comes into play, there we go, boom, we take uh, <coughs> Command Jamie's wrist, <coughs> Bron goes what the hell's going on here? Notice, and this is important, notice his sword, which is a type of shamshir, type of sabre, is in the scabbard at this point. And that's going to be important in a second. Okay, now we go, okay, what's, what's she doing here? She's just waving the whip around. Why are these two guys standing there? If you see someone, what, for, I mean, I guess you've got to be fair to them. You've got to, they're thinking, what the hell is going on here? Who are these girls? Um, we've got one one of the girls with two daggers, two poison daggers, as we later find out, um, who's just kind of standing there. Why, why is she just standing there? We don't know. She should be attacking in. Um, she should be charging in, basically. If you've got daggers against someone with a sword, they've got the range advantage. Also, his sword is in the scabbard. She shouldn't be leaving that much distance between her and the guy with the sword. She should be charging him down with those knives as quickly as she possibly can do. Um, her, on the other hand, is just waving the whip around. Why? I guess she's demonstrating to the audience. In this case, she has a whip and she knows how to use it. Uh, but Jamie's just kind of like, what's he doing? Um, he should be charging down the whip girl with his sword, getting his sword out of the scabbard as quickly as possible. That whip is not going to do him any real harm. Okay, so here we go. She's just spinning the whip around. At this point, Bron is, I guess we're supposed to assume Bron's like, are we actually going to have a fight here? Um, and she did finally charge in with her knives. Good, good job. So she did get the first attack in. That's if you've got the shorter weapon, that's what you should be aiming to do. You've got, a, if you, whether it's sword versus spear or knife versus um, sword, if you've got the shorter weapon, you've got to be charging down the person with the longer weapon, closing that range so that you're in your range, you're at the range you want to be and not at the range that they want to be at. Okay, so here we go. Good, good, she's attacking. Now, interesting. This is, I would say, pretty much the best example of real martial arts technique in the whole of this um, sequence. 
he is drawing his sword and defending with it at the same time. We know that this was done, it's shown in historical fencing treatises, it's shown in Fiori, it's shown in Vardy, and uh, yeah, it's really good. He's essentially, if you think about it at this point, for those of you who know what half-swording is, he is essentially half-swording here. He's using his sword as a, a bar or like a staff, um, short staff, to block those incoming um, blades. What I would say is, why is she cutting so much? She should be stabbing here. And also, not only should she be stabbing because it will do more damage to him and makes it more likely to get the poison into his body, but also stabs would, I think in this situation, be more difficult for Bronn to defend against with his sword. Okay, but good, good on the side that he is getting his sword out as quickly as possible and he is defending himself with the sword and with the scabbard whilst doing it. We go on here and she's still waving her whip around. Oh, right, so now the spear, the spear girl's come in. She is twirling it. She is twirling that spear like there's no tomorrow. Why is she twirling it around? Why doesn't she just go, stab? Why, what is with the spin, spin, spin? Anyway, here we go, she's gonna, there we go, twirl, twirl, twirl. We don't know why she's twirling, but finally she did get around to um, actually thrusting with the spear at uh, Jamie. Good, finally. This girl's still whirling her whip around. What's she doing? <laughs> okay, oh, whip round, whip around. Oh, yeah, let's just whip in, in, in the earth. There we go. Oh, spinning around. Da, da, da. Oh, whip again. Right. There we might see what the whip girl's actually looking for. It seems that the other two's jobs are to attack Jamie and attack Bron, and whip girl's job is to try and get her whip onto either one of them. She looks like she's aiming for Bron most of the time. Um, and try and detain some part of him so that Dagger Girl can actually go and stab him. Okay, so there we go, I suppose they thought this out, but it's not very clear when you watch it the first time. Da, da, da. At some point we notice also that the Whip Girl does have a dagger herself, but it's not made very clear in the fight sequence. Right, nice. So there we go, there's a little technique there, Bron actually stepped on the end of the whip, perfectly valid. Uh, this goes actually for spears, flails, um, all kinds of polearm, and in fact for sword as well. Again, if we look at some of the historical fencing treatises, we see that stamping on an opponent's sword, if you beat it onto the ground and then stamp onto it with your foot, you've detained their weapon. You've essentially grabbed it with your foot and with your body weight. So completely valid technique, and he's now stepping in to give her what for with the sword. Knowing Bron, he's probably not going to intending to kill her, he's probably intending to just um, um, slap her on the face or hit her with the flat or knock her out, punch her or something. Okay. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> there we go. Right. <clears throat> so it's interesting, Dagger Girl is defending fairly, um, fairly well with the two knives and that's fairly realistic. But you've got to remember, if you're fighting with one knife or two knives against a swordsman, you're never going to be in distance to hit them back unless you're closing in. So she's making the error at the moment of just defend, 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 instead of defend, riposte, defend, riposte, defend, riposte. She's always going to be taking the fight back to the opponent. Okay, and oh, more twirling. Yeah, we don't know. She realises everything's going wrong at this point and takes Marcella away. Um, and they decide they're not going to win the fight. And right, okay. There was a nice little uh, bit of a technique in there. See if I can go back a bit. Da, da, da. There we go. Let me go again. Right. Okay. So if you saw that, Spear Girl blocked with the top end of the shaft, top end of her pole, and then with the back end knocked the sword offline. That's what we call a rabat or a beat, and that's actually a really nice technique. And you can obviously, if you aim that at someone's sword hand or sword arm, you could disarm someone like that. You could of course also block with the top end, then when you hit with the back end you could just hit straight to the person's head or neck or whatever, you could just hit them. But clearing the weapon out of the way first is, is often a fairly good, good idea, a good thing to do. And there we go, the fight basically finishes. So there we go, I think the basic problem with that fight was number one, not all of the people involved, not all of the actors and actresses involved in that fight were that that had that much time to train for it, obviously. Um, but also I think the main problem is it wasn't edited very well, it wasn't very easy to tell what was going on and who was fighting who at any one time. Um, the whip 
I'm not a big fan of, the whip didn't really do very much, and in actual fact if you look really carefully the whip girl does have a dagger, but they don't really make that clear, most of the time she's just there whirling her whip around, and it's just really there for show, it's just circus, it's not really very um, applicable to a real fight shall we say. Um, but, my point is that having watched this, and for this video having re-watched it a few times in succession, there are actually some really good things in there, they're just not very clear as a normal viewer when you just watch it one time through, you don't notice those details, so there are some nice details in there. So kudos to the fighter ranger for actually putting those things in, I would say I would slap on the wrists the editor in this case for chopping it up in such a way that it made the fight almost unintelligible. There we go guys, cheers! Click subscribe now and also follow us on Facebook.